Hello guys, welcome to Code with BK. So in this video, we'll see how to check if an integer is a fascinating number or not. In the first part, we'll see how to approach this, okay? How to solve this. And after we go through the explanation, we finally look at the codes, right? So if you're just looking for the code, you can find the links to the code in the description of this video, right? And to each code in the link that I've given, there's a text explanation. So if you're somebody who likes to read and understand, you can go through that. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. So let's look at what a fascinating number is. So suppose we have our integer n, okay? The first condition of fascinating number is this n should be of at least three digits, okay? If it is less than three digits, this is not a fascinating number. Then what we do is we take n, we find 2n which is basically n into 2, we find 3n which is basically n into 3. Then we place them one after the other, okay? That is we concatenate the values and then if all digits from 1 to 9 are present exactly once in this concatenated value, then this is a fascinating number. Let's take an example. I have 192, okay? I have 192. I have 2n is 384, 3n is 576. Okay, we concatenate these 192, 384, 576. 576. This contains all digits from 1 to 9 exactly once. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 9. Okay, zeros are redundant. Okay, okay, we can have as many as zeros possible in this. We can have no zeros at all. So you can have multiple zeros. The zeros do not matter. All digits from one to nine should be present exactly once in this number. Only then it is a fascinating number. Okay. So I hope this explanation about this fascinating number is clear. There's also a link in the description that which describes what a fascinating number is. Let's try to solve this problem now. Okay. So I will write a method that takes an integer n. Okay. It returns true if it is a fascinating number else it returns false. Okay, so I'll say function. Okay, I'll write a general pseudo code. We'll look at the implementation in programming languages at the end. Okay, so I'll say is fascinating number for short takes an integer n. Okay, and end function here. It turns true if n is a fascinating number, otherwise, it returns false. All right, so our first check was to ensure that this is at least three digits. Ensure num digits in n is greater than or equal to 3. Okay. So how do you find the number of digits in this integer? I have already posted a video for this. You can check out the link of the video in the description. I will quickly write the pseudo code for the function that finds the number of digits in n. Okay. So this is the pseudo code that finds the number of digits in this integer n. Okay. And returns that value. Okay. Again, this problem is easier when you have C++, Java, C sharp, Python, because you can directly convert this n which is integer into a string and then find the length of the string. Okay. But converting an integer to a string gets trickier in C, right? So I've written a method that goes for all programming languages. All right. So I'll say if get num digits, okay. Calling this function with this value of n, if it is less than three, I return false. So this is the first check. The next thing we need to do is find the concatenation of n, 2 n and 3 n. We can store this value into a long variable as well, but I will use strings to concatenate n, 2 n and 3 n because that's easier. So taking a variable cn, which is a string, which will store the concatenation of these three values. So I'll say convert n to string, okay, plus convert 2 n to string, okay. Let's convert 3n to string and add them together. Okay, concatenate them together. Okay, finding 2n is simple, you multiply n by 2. Finding 3n n is simple, you multiply n by 3. So in this concatenated string, I'll call it cn. In this cn, I need to check if digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are present exactly once or not. That is a definition of fascinating number. So I'll start with a Boolean array. Okay, I'll say the name of the array is contains, okay, boolean array 
of n locations all values set to false so i take a boolean array contains with 10 locations and all values are set to false so why do i take this okay all 10 locations so indices are 0 9 okay I have taken this array contains to indicate that this digit i is contained in this string or not. Okay. So if I find this digit in this string, then the value at this location will be true. Okay. Otherwise it will be false. Okay. So initially before iterating the string, I have set all values to false indicating that digits 1 to 9 are not found in the string yet. Okay. 0 in this case is redundant because we don't care about zeros. Then I iterate the string, I will say for i in range length of cn, okay, d is digit at index i in cn. So I iterate the string cn, okay, use i as an index that iterates cn, okay. Again, this for loop is language dependent, we will see how we do it in the codes. You just need to iterate this string and find the D, which is the digit at i index in CN. Okay. Again, this is language dependent because if this CN is a string in Java, then value at i index will be a single character. It depends upon the programming language on how we convert that single character into this corresponding value in integer. In my pseudocode, all I care is I need to find the digit at i index in this string, which should be an integer. Okay. D is supposed to be an integer. So if D is zero, I simply continue. So 0 is redundant. If it is present, I continue to the next iteration. Okay. If contains of D is false. Okay. That is the value at location D in contains array is false. It means I have not found the digit D in this string C and yet. So what do I, so what do I do? I said contains of D is true. Okay. To indicate that I found a digit D in this string CN. Okay. Setting the value at this location D in this array to true. Else. So else part would be when this contains D is true. Contains D is true. It means that I have already found a digit D in this string CN in some previous iteration. And now I am finding D again. Okay. According to our rules of fascinating number, D must be present only once. Okay. All digits must be present only once. If I find it again, I simply return false because I am finding it the second time in this string CN. Okay. So this loop checks if all digits are present only once, but it does not ensure that all the digits from one to nine are present. It just ensures that whatever digits are present in this concatenated string are present only once. We need to make sure that all these digits are present in this concatenated string. So what we do is for i in range 1 to 10, sorry 1 to 9, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay, I say if contains of i is false, this means that I did not find this digit i in this string cn okay and that's why the value at this location i in this array of was false so i return false because i need to find all digits from 1 to 9 in this string cn i'll say and for and finally before you end the function you return true to indicate that i found all these values from 1 to 9 exactly once in this concatenated string cn so, so this is how you check if an integer n is a fascinating number or not. And now look at the codes where we implement this pseudocode. So this is our implementation in the Java code. And I've written a function is fascinating number that takes an integer n returns true if this is a fascinating number, otherwise it returns false. To find the number of digits, I convert this n to its corresponding string. And then I find the length of the string, which is basically the number of digits in n. So our first check was to make sure that number of digits are at least three. Then we find two n and 3n and then we find the concatenated string. So this is the variable cn that we took in our pseudocode. We have the contains array with 10 locations or locations set to false. Then we iterate the entire concatenated string. We pick up each character at ith index in each iteration 
and then we convert this character C to its corresponding digit. So this is a standard trick to convert a character which contains a digit to its corresponding int value. So if digit is 0, zeros are redundant in our case, so we continue to the next iteration. If contains digit is false, it means this digit has not been found in concatenated string so far. I set contains digit to true to indicate that I found this digit in this concatenated string. Otherwise else, that is if contains digit is true is the else part here. This means that I am finding this digit the second time. And according to our rules, we are supposed to have all the digits 1 through 9 only once. So if I find any digit the second time, I return false. So this loop checks that whatever digits are present in the concatenated string are present exactly once. Okay, but it does not check for all integers 1 through 9. This check that we have all digits 1 through 9 in the concatenated string. So if any value for j contains j is false, which indicates that digit j was not found in concatenated, I return false. Finally, I return true because all my conditions for fascinating number were checked. So let me run this and check Java C. Okay. 192 is a fascinating number true. Let me take another example. Okay. And let me also print concatenated so that you can see the concatenated string. Okay. So I'll say concatenated. All right. Okay, so 219 is a fascinating number true because we have all digits 1 through 9 and exactly 1 in this concatenated string. So I hope this video was helpful. So please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. Please let me know in the comments if there is anything not clear to you in this video or if there is a concept you want me to discuss or if there is a question you want me to solve. Thank you.